and thank you for joining us today. My name is Tracy Stone. I'm the director of our Tech Women at Intuit initiative and the global leader for our Intuit's Women, Intuit Women's Network. On behalf of the network, we are so excited to wrap up an amazing week-long celebration for International Women's Day. And today we get to, to, to join you all with our virtual, virtual prosperity prop up. Hopefully you were able to join the events earlier this week or catch our recaps on our social uh, channels. March is Women's History Month and today we celebrate International Women's Day, a time to celebrate the social, economic, cultural and political achievements of women and take action for gender equality. With this year's theme of Choose to Challenge, we have the opportunity to challenge how we will call out gender bias and inequality in all forms and how we choose to seek out and celebrate women's achievements. Here at Intuit, our employee resource groups are an important part of our diversity and our, our diverse and inclusive workplace. And in the Women's Network, our mission is to power prosperity for Intuit women and customers around the globe. I love having the opportunity to tap into my passion for empowering and advancing those who identify as women through this powerful community. In honor of International Women's Day, we, we are spotlighting three of our women-owned QuickBooks customers. Three Ships, founded by Connie Lowe and Laura Burgett. Canda Chocolates, founded by Karen Blackwell. Rizzo's Curls, founded by Julie Soprato. I had the opportunity to try each of these products and oh my goodness, let me tell you, these are, these are all amazing. The products are amazing. If you wanna purchase your own, you can find the link to their websites posted in our Zoom chat. In a few minutes, Laura Balaz, our Executive Vice President, Chief Marketing Officer, and General Manager of our Strategic Partner Group, will interview these amazing women to find out more about them, how they run their businesses, and how they have handled this challenging year. Before we get started, here are a few things to note. We want to make sure we have the opportunity for you to ask questions and get those answered from each of our businesses featured today. Please post your questions in the Zoom uh, using the Q&A feature and we'll get to them later in our session. We will also be raffling off some of their amazing products for those attendees that complete the post session event survey. Keep an eye out for that in the Zoom as well. And our next virtual prosperity pop-up will be held in April to celebrate uh, Earth Day. Thank you everyone for being here. I'm now going to turn it over to Laura for today's pop-up. Laura, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Tracy. I am so excited to talk to these amazing women owners. Uh, as you said, Tracy, I have been so excited to do this all week. Uh, highlight of my week uh, to, and what a great way to end the week on a Friday talking to these fantastic women. Um, let's get started and just jump right in. And, and I'd love to know, uh, let's maybe start with Connie and Laura. You know, what was it? I want to hear from all of you, but we'll start with Connie and Laura. What was it that, you know, you knew you wanted to start your business? What was that moment? And, 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 and talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah, definitely. We're so happy to be here. So thank you for having us. So I think for both of us, we've always been dreaming of starting our own company since a very, very young age. Both of us have parents who were entrepreneurs, uh, both of our dads own businesses. So this was something that never seems out of reach or out of question for us. I even remember selling home-baked goods on the uh, school playground <laughs> when I was a child. Um, and then the real inspiration behind Three Ships happened when we were students. So I was going to the University of Toronto. I studied chemical engineering. Connie was at Queens for Business. And both her and I were huge fans of natural beauty. But we were really frustrated two things on the market. So the first was that natural beauty was really expensive. As recent grads, we couldn't even dream of spending $400 on an entire routine or $80 on one cream. Yeah, so we were just <laughs> the lack of affordable options. And then the second thing was a lack of transparency. So there's a lot of greenwashing in the space. It's confusing yeah. about what's natural, what isn't natural, what am I actually paying for here? So um, with those two problems in mind, Three Ships was born around four years ago. Yeah. So at the time we were both 23 fresh grads, we both had $2,000 each in savings and that's what we pulled together to start the business. Um, and we started by hand making products in my apartment kitchen. 
Um, at the time, we both had other full-time jobs, um, so we'd work our nine to fives, and then we would meet up in the evenings and on weekends to hand make the products, and then we would bring everything over to Laura's apartment to ship out of because we didn't have enough space in one person's apartment to store everything. Um, so it was definitely a labor of love in the beginning days, for sure. Um, and then we went full-time in 2018, and that's when things really started to take off. Um, and so today, you can now find us at stores like Target and Whole Foods. We have 17 products, actually, within our assortment. So these are our natural skincare products. Um, we have a team of seven full-time, um, and we're just so happy to be here. So excited to share awesome. our story with you all. Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing. So inspiring. Uh, Karen, I'd love to hear from you. Talk to you. Talk to us about your sort of startup moment. Absolutely. And thank you, Laura and Tracy. And I do want to just give a shout out and say I came from corporate America. And I also used to be the chair of our employee resource group. And I also spoke on Women's Day back when I worked for the company. So just happy so to be great. here. Thank you so much. Um, my background, my story is just that I simply worked in corporate America and I took a business mission trip to Ghana. And I had an opportunity to meet with different business owners. Chocolate was not a part of that what I thought I was going to end up doing, but I tasted the chocolate and I'm like, okay, this is what chocolate should taste like. I loved it. <laughs> Went through the manufacturing, looked and saw that it was actually being shipped, a majority of it, over to Belgium. And I'm like, Belgium? You know, so my whole, my whole world melted away, right? So I'm like, I love Belgium chocolate. This is what I live for. But guess what? Belgium doesn't make cocoa beans. It's coming mm -hmm. from Ghana, which is the second largest exporter in the world. And so I still wasn't convinced that I had to create a company, but I went and I, you know, toured, I went to the Cape Coast Castle, I, you know, had my DNA done, so I knew I was from Ghana, and I just had a whole transformative experience, and from there, I came back and said, I want to connect with Ghana, how can I connect with my roots, you know, not in a charity way, because they don't all, you know, it's not just charity, it's more of a, how can I give back and, like, just connect, and so I decided to come back, I created the company, I scoured the shelves and said, is there any chocolate on the shelf um, that comes from Ghana, and there wasn't. And then I talked to buyers and they were like, hey, we can't keep chocolate on the shelf no matter where it comes from, right? So it's not like there isn't space for another, you know, chocolate maker. So I said, okay, good to know. I'm not insane by going up against the big giants. Um, I can actually do this. And so I wouldn't have done it. And the last thing I'll leave you with is I wouldn't have done it if I couldn't have made a difference in the lives of others. And, and so that is, that's the only reason why I left a mission-driven company was only if I could do more. And so we're doing that in three ways. We have fair trade cocoa, which is a start. It pays the farmers a fair wage. We also have our chocolate made in Ghana. That is different. So not many bars are made in the source. We actually make our chocolate in Ghana, but that's a, there's a reason behind that. It gives back to their economy and it promotes their jobs. And then lastly, we have a 10% give back campaign, which gives our proceeds to a charity. And this week, this year, we're partnered with an organization in St. Louis, which is Social Justice Learning Institute in Inglewood, California. So, so happy that I was able to make a difference. We're trying to be the Ben and Jerry's of chocolate, if you will, if that resonates with you. Um, and that's really our story and our journey. And we kind of, we love chocolate. We came here to do it because we love it, but we stayed for the mission. So that's what we're doing it for. Love it. Love it. That's incredible. All right, Jalisa, what about your story? Hi, very nice to meet you today. Um, so Risos Curls um, was founded in 2017, but I have been working with hair and just, I grew up struggling with my own hair and starting in um, high school, literally, and I was 14 years old, I started making my own concoctions um, to style my own hair, utilizing natural ingredients um, and natural just teachings and, and learnings that I had from my own grandmother and my, and my mother. And throughout my journey throughout high school and college, I would meet all of these women who I call undercover curlies. Mm -hmm. So women that actually have curly hair, but you would never know it because they straighten it so much. <laughs> and I would meet them in the bathrooms and class and all these different places. And they would say, I love your hair, but my hair is actually curly. I would never be able to get it like that. And so then I would hold these little sessions and in so many different place, random places. And I would end up creating a lot of friendships from meeting these women in these different situations and elevators and here and there. And I would style their hair and show them my my process and and show them how to utilize a lot of these plants and and natural ingredients to care for their scalp and hair 
And then that moment where they would see their hair naturally styled for the very first time was something so special. And um, I feel like I got kind of got addicted to that moment because I think that uh, women especially have such a unique and special relationship with their hair. Yeah. And so I just kept doing that. And then I, um, once I was in grad school, I started trying to make my formula professionally with a chemist. And I never really intended for it to, I never really thought it would really become a business. I just mostly was making it more convenient for myself and the women that I knew that were, that were utilizing my concoctions. And on that very first day, I just kind of started a website and, and opened up these social media pages. And then all of those women that I had helped over the years, which ended up in the end being hundreds and hundreds of them, they all were the people that supported me and purchased my product on day one. And they all became my customers. So uh, now awesome. fast forward three and a half years later, we're, so, we're in over 57 countries and sold in Target stores nationwide. Wow, that is so great. Um, you kind of gave me a clue to this, but you know, when you do run your own company, it's like, there's a lot of, there's a, 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 a onus that comes with that of, you know, you, you've got a lot of weight on your shoulders, but you also, you know, you've got to love it to do it. And, you know, it sounds like if I had to say, what is the one thing that you love about running your own business? What would that be? Um, not having to adhere to anyone else's standards of, of beauty, of running a business and being able to do everything my way. Riso's Curls, Three Pillars are Curls Community Culture. And um, we're not just about curls, we're, we, it's so much bigger than that. And I love being able to create a mission-driven business and be able to um, help other women on their own journeys as well. Awesome, I love that. And Karen, I know you have a very mission-driven business as well. Um, and I know that when you, you know, you've been running the business, is there one thing that you wish you would have known um, when you started that you know now? Just that it didn't take, you know, a huge investment. And I know that sounds crazy, but even 10 years ago, I had ideas. I mean, a lot of us are sitting in our jobs and we can be happy, but you can have ideas and be afraid to do it. And I started off, you know, taking money from my job and, you know, dumping it in and, and put it in these expensive ways. But then when I got kind of halfway through that, I was like, oh, here's a cheaper way to do this. Here's another way to do this. And so I've been on a mission to share with other women. I'm like, if you guys want to start a business, just do it. You can bootstrap it. There's so many ways and resources. And, you know, during the pandemic, we got even more. So just use them. I just wish I knew that when I started. So there's never a best chance to start, kind of like what they say about many things in life. There is no perfect time. So the perfect time is when the idea hits your head really love it love it love it thank you for that inspiration you know and you kind of alluded to the fact that there's no perfect time and some people are starting businesses and during you know the, the pandemic is what stimulated them to have that idea and lean into it and, and develop something i'm curious connie and laura you know you of course started your business in your apartments i love it uh and pre-COVID-19, but as COVID-19 has hit, you know, and so we've all sort of taken a moment to think about our lives and also adapt. Um, is there any things that you would point to that COVID-19 has changed how you think about servicing your customers, how you think about your business? Yeah, there's definitely been huge changes from COVID, both from like a back-end supply chain standpoint. The global supply chain right now is really, really stretched thin. Yeah. So we've had to rethink a lot about how we manufacture our product and get our product to our customers just to make sure that we're, um, you know, evolving with the evolving needs of the global supply chain. Um, our online business has grown substantially. So historically, we've been 80% retail, 20% online. During the first uh, wave of COVID in particular, we were growing 60% month over month on our e-commerce site. Mm -hmm. And I think 2020 for us, especially as a team, was an exceptionally challenging year. So well, this is going to be a bit of a bomb, but I actually had brain surgery a week before COVID started. So back- Oh my gosh. Last, last week was actually my crane anniversary. So I went in March 4th of last year, had a 10 hour brain operation to remove a tumor the size of a very large egg that was in the center of my brain. So I was diagnosed wow. four months before that at the age of 26 with a brain tumor. So I spent the first two months of COVID recovering in bed. So 
it was like a very weird time because the world was slowing down at the exact same time that I was having to recover from this operation. Yeah. And, you know, health is just so paramount. And I think that's something that Connie and I have really had a, a flip in our perspective towards mm -hmm. is just the importance of health and that none of this is taking for granted. So it's been a long road to recovery. I'm happy to say that I'm feeling great now. I'm fully recovered, had to relearn some things after the operation. And it's also changed our perspective as founders in terms of what we want the business to do and what we want to accomplish within our lives. Um, so we're very happy to say that after this whole experience, we wanted to come up with a way that we could give back. And so we've partnered with Make-A-Wish Foundation in both Canada and the U.S., and we're going to be donating a portion of our profits every year specifically for young children and young adults that have brain tumors and brain cancers. Um, brain cancer is actually the leading cause of cancer-related deaths for teens and young adults in their 20s. So this is a, a cause that we care a lot about, um, and we just want to make sure that people are maintain inspiration, that they don't lose hope, um, mm -hmm. because that's really what's pulled me through this experience. And I think the business has been a net positive, even despite facing a cancer diagnosis. Wow. Uh, well, first of all, uh, Laura, I'm so happy that you're well. And um, um, what a wonderful story. And thank you for inspiring us. And um, the component of, of giving back at, at, into it, we believe in, we, we, we have a value called We Care and Give Back. And I think all of you are, are, are displaying that and it's, uh, it's such, a, such a wonderful story. Um, you know, when, so, and I love how you've thought about, you know, the importance of thinking and evolving uh, your business in, in, in a really tenuous time, not only with COVID-19, but what you went through with a health situation. Um, Karen, you know, uh, switching to you, I, I'm curious as you think about the future, you know, we are coming through the pandemic, hopefully light at the end of the tunnel here. What is it in the future that you're excited about as you think about the path forward? It's really the, the first thing that excites me is about, you know, being able to make a difference, being able to show it a measurable impact. So I'm like, wow, am I going to be able to show like, here's the amount of money that I gave to this organization. Here's the amount of women business owners that I've been able to have an impact with. Here's the change that I've made in Ghana. So I love looking at the numbers, being able to make a difference. I mean, that excites me being, you know, being able to have things that I have a vision about, like opening up, you know, a business so that women can come in and get free services to learn about how to start and launch their business. Um, much like other, there's so many women business owners that are doing this and I love it. And they all take 20 and 30 and I'm going to take my 20 and 30 every year. And then if we all keep doing it, we can all make an impact. So I get super excited about that. Um, the other part that I get excited about is I'm just on a driven mission to share about self-care. Um, being a business owner, people talk about the grind. Yes, I'm up till midnight. Yes, I'm up at five, but I'm up at five for a different reason. I'm up at five for quiet. I pray, I, you know, I might, you know, take some time for myself, go for a walk, go for a run, whatever it is, I do a lot of self-care. And the more that I dive into my business, the more that I find that that's important for myself, for my friends, for other female business owners. And so I am just on this thing that says the more, the further I go on my business, the more I'm going to promote the self-care part. Like, I don't want people to be afraid of starting a business. There's a way to fit in time for yourself. So those two things, the impact and then taking time for myself, I'm going to take it and make it. So thank you. That's so important. And, you know, <laughs> it's one of the things we've talked a lot about at Intuit too. It's how do you recharge because you could work 24 seven, but that's not going to get you anywhere. You're not going to be as energized um, in any part of your life. And our lives are so blended uh, that we, we gotta, we gotta take care of ourselves. So I love that uh, on so many levels. Um, Jalisa, I I'd like to, you know, you, you started to talk about this a little bit when you were introing yourself and I was incredibly inspired. You were talking about Instagram and, and, and your social uh, footprint and how you have such, you know, almost a fan base, if you will. Um, and I love that. And, you know, you can't, you know, look, I'm, I, I'm a marketer and, you know, your, your best advocates are people who use and love your products. And um, I'd love to just though hear, how did you get your brand going and, and leverage the power of social? Um, I think we could all learn a lot from that. Yeah. So our social media platforms really just 
serve um, as a resource to our customers for them to find whatever it is that they're looking for. I think what's really interesting about our business is that the majority of our customers are not people who have been wearing their hair natural their whole life or had even been wearing it a week or a month ago. The majority of our customers are people that are just now uh, allowing themselves to even try to wear their hair natural for the very first time with our products. Um, and something that's really interesting about the quarantine is that a, what a lot of people don't realize is like the amount of people that went natural during quarantine. <laughs> you know, they weren't going out as much. They were, they were finally kind of allowing themselves that time to see, okay, what's under this, this blowout? What's under this, you know, like what, <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's see how my hair looks just raw off the shower. So um, what our platforms really serve is that curl education because the a lot of what our society and everything that we have learned about hair is primarily about straight hair. And um, there's just different needs and, and just different education that goes um, with regards to, to hair and also um, learnings about scalp and how to utilize processes, um, how often you should wash your hair. Uh, the type of ingredients that are best depending on your porosity, your your texture, your this. So there's so many things that that are um, really educational on that end, and um, also it serves um, a place for them to connect with each other. And we really really push community and building community. And a lot of the time too, what um, people don't realize that social media is the best for is to have direct um insight and, and and an understanding of your business and what the customer wants so we've literally one of our new innovation one of our new products i didn't come up with it nope it was our customers that demanded a refresh and a tangle spray and they told us this is what we need from you and i said yes you guys call the shots and i'm just the one over here you know do, doing what what, what y'all need so um, yeah, I pretty, I really utilize it as a, as a place to have direct connection and insight into, into the customer. I love it. I love it. Such great advice. Uh, and just incredible. <laughs> Let's Connie and Laura, I want to ask you a question. You know, I, if you, I, I don't know if you all can see the chat, but it is lighting up. Everyone is so inspired by all of you ladies. I know I am. Um, but, you know, so I think there are probably some people here. It's like, I'm ready to start my business. Uh, what, what advice would you give anybody listening on this particular call or, um, frankly, anybody who wants to start a business? What would you tell them? Yeah, definitely. I think something that we learned over the past four years is just the importance of sacrifice and putting your ego aside. Um, so I remember like back in the beginning days, we were hand making products, like literally like pressing these things on my kitchen counter. Um, I remember one of our first like large orders back in the day was for 7,000 units of our first product that was all handmade. So I remember for a period of three weeks, we would meet up in the evenings and on weekends after working our nine to fives, working till midnight. Um, it's not glamorous. And I think that sometimes in today's age, especially entrepreneurship can be a little bit overly glamorized and you just see people's highlight reels on social sometimes. <laughs> And, you know, for us, like, I think that's why a big part of our mission at Three Ships is to be transparent. Um, our mission is to be the most transparent natural beauty brand in the world. Um, and we want to be transparent about that, you know, behind the scenes, you know, grind too, because I think sometimes mm -hmm. today there's so many quotes out there that are like, do your own thing, like be an entrepreneur. But I think oftentimes people don't realize the sacrifice that goes into it. So it's almost like being prepared to take the first step. And that being said, the other part of what I would recommend is to ask for help. Um, I think something that Laura and I also learned is even though we are capable of doing most things on our own, it doesn't mean that other people don't want to help us and are they're actually really willing to help. Um, so when we were first starting at 23, um, you know, we could try to figure out how to figure out the whole trademark process on our own, but we also knew friends who worked at law firms and we'd like ask them questions here and there. And we were really shocked by how willing people were to help us. Um, so to those who are thinking of starting your own business, um, which we say like, congrats and kudos to you, um, definitely just be prepared to put your ego aside in the beginning, um, be prepared to do the work, but then also know that people will be there to help you. Excellent. Excellent. I love the honesty in that. Uh, it's not all glamorous, but, but incredibly fulfilling. So really appreciate that. 
All right, so I, I hate that this is coming to a close, uh, but I have time, I think, for one last question for all of you. And um, it's, this is tough because it's like, I could talk to you all forever. Uh, let me start with you, Karen, um, and I'm gonna ask all of you this. You know, this year's theme of International Women's Day, International Women's Month is choose to challenge. And I'm curious, and Karen, again, I'm gonna start with you. What does that mean to you personally? It really means challenging the status quo and using our voices and our platform and our life to uplift other women. I, I can't say that enough in the smallest way, in the largest way. And I'll give you an example that might be relatable to anybody in, in their office. I was uh, working with another large company last week and they were doing a, a virtual pop-up for me and they were creating my booth and the avatars in front of the booth were all men. And it was the strangest thing. And we went through it three times. The second time I showed up, the man looked different. And I was like, no, but no, but still I, I'm a woman. And so they're like, okay, we're working on it. And, the, and they were, you know, bless them. They were working all night on it and they finally popped up and, and my avatar, I don't know about everybody else's, but my avatar looked like me. And it didn't have to, I said, I don't care. Can I first get a woman? Then maybe of any ethnicity, can I get anything? And so even just, I didn't even want to ask because it was a large company. I mean, I'm so grateful. Like I am for working with you guys. I didn't want to ask, right? But if I didn't ask that question, but what about all the other people? And then the other company started speaking up. So it's just, you, any small thing you do to challenge the status quo is something that can make a difference and you have no idea of the ripple effects from that. So I, I, you know, give that to all of you. If you can challenge it in the smallest way, the most respectful way with gratitude and with humility, then I think we can go far together. So that, that's, my, that. that's my thing to challenge. Love it. All right. That, that's a, that's a tough one to follow, but Jalisa, mm -hmm. I'm going to go to you. What does choose to challenge mean to you? Yeah, it means um, to continue breaking down barriers um, and being the first in so many new spaces. Um, as a um, self-funded Latina-owned company, it means so much to me when we start, for example, working with new retailers and we're the first multicultural founded brand that they've ever worked with, the first self-funded, the first, all of these things. And by us being there, they um, it, it opens doors to a whole new demographic, mm -hmm. a whole new category that they may have been overlooked in the past. And um, I have seen that once we enter these new spaces, I then connect another um, self-funded woman of color owned business that I know. And all of a sudden they start working together and I'm no longer the first or the only I'm somebody that has been able to kind of like connect um, another community into these new spaces. I love that. That, that connection is something that uh, I think as women, we're really good at, if I might uh, toot our own <laughs> horns, and uh, which I'm happy to do, by the way, as we should. We should advocate for ourselves uh, and advocate for women around us. So I love uh, those thoughts and... Um, Connie and Laura, choose to challenge. I'll go over to you. And it's interesting. I wonder if you you both have the same answer or different answers. We probably, <laughs> we probably answer, you probably answer. complete each other's sentences all the time. <laughs> At this so, point, yeah. oh man. <laughs> oh my goodness, there you go. Yeah. Uh, case proven. <laughs> At this point, we do definitely finish each other's sentences and we talk in very similar ways too that sometimes people don't know which of us is speaking on the phone. <laughs> but I would say for me, choose to challenge would mean to challenge yourself. I think within life, it's very easy to get comfortable, to mm -hmm. fall into a routine, to just like kind of just keep going along and keep coasting. But I think if we've learned anything over the last year, like all of us, is that nothing's guaranteed, nothing's promised. Mm -hmm. You should challenge yourself today. Don't wait for tomorrow because it's never going to get easier or more convenient or less scary. Starting a business or going for like that promotion or asking the girl out that you've always been nervous to, to go up and talk to or mm -hmm. having those hard conversations, it's never going to get easy as you go along. It'll always be hard. It'll always be challenging. Uh, one of my favorite quotes is, and I don't know if this was true necessarily, because you never know what the internet, um, <laughs> the truth of the internet, but apparently Barack Obama had a plaque on his desk that said, hard things are hard. And I think mm. that this is such an important reminder. And I think about that quote mm. probably once a week at least, mm. because 
what starting a business is hard. It's going to be hard, but it's also so re rewarding. So stepping into those experiences, choosing to make yourself uncomfortable, I think is so important. And for any women that are uh, tuning in today, I would really encourage you to get sales experience. Mm -hmm. I think this is something that was a game changer for Connie and I, since we both have a sales background. It's definitely scary. When I was a kid, I couldn't even call a restaurant to ask them what time they were open. I was so shy and so nervous. But as you step into those challenges or whatever it is that you have a hard time doing, lean into those experiences um, and you'll be better off for it. Because I think ultimately how we can make a real impact within the world as women is by owning things, controlling things, making lots of money. It sucks that our <laughs> society is capitalistic and that's money driven, but that's a reality. Mm -hmm. And until women like collectively have more power and more of a voice, which comes with holding some of these higher up positions, challenging the status quo. Businesses. Yes, <laughs> challenging the status quo as well, like these other yeah. things we touched on. Mm -hmm. I think that's the best thing that we can really do. Mm -hmm. Love it. Love it. Uh, well, I have to say, I, I am truly inspired. And, you know, if I've, if I've learned anything from you all in this talk, it's also, you know, one thing, believe in yourself. Uh, what I hear each and every one of you saying is, you know, it's sort of be brave, take risks, believe in yourself and ask for help. Believing in yourself doesn't mean you don't ask for help. Uh, so I, um, gosh, I can't, I, I, I know I've got to turn this over now to Tracy because I know we have lots of Q and A coming in, but I have been so inspired and, um, have learned so much and, uh, I just can't thank you all enough. You know, we couldn't, you know, we're very proud to have you using, uh, QuickBooks and, um, Intuit products and, you know. Um, we are a mission-driven company, and we believe it's so deeply in our DNA that really um, diversity, equity, and inclusion is really what makes the world go around, and it is why we're better than we could be because we have so many diverse people of background, different ways of thinking, color, gender, all of it, and so um, you just are all oh, so inspirational and um, I, I thank you. Um, all right, Tracy, I'm going to ask you to make sure that we answer the great questions that are coming in. Um, thank you so much, ladies. It's been a true pleasure. You have inspired me um, along with all of the people who've called in today.